What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fai, and I couldn't be happier to have Eric G. Tabor back. It has been a little bit of a struggle city since uh, since you've been gone. Has not been a great a great one for yours truly. Uh, I know there's been a couple good guys with uh, some guys with some good results in the in the Discord and whatnot. But I'm ready to get back after tonight. Sheets, how was your trip? And let's uh, let's talk about this giant slate. My trip was great, and and uh, I was able to get some DFS stuff in, and the soccer, and the MMA, and all that stuff, and even even put some stuff on the uh, uh, on when I was on the plane. I actually tripled my money in the NBA thanks to a freaking stellar performance from one Dorian Finney Smith at four percent. It was the I right kind. Of, if there's one place to time to play them, it's those little three gamers, right? Yeah, and then you know what? I was rooting for it to go to overtime, and just as it got close, Dorian Finney Smith fouled out. I'm like, no, no more overtime. Right? So, so I ended up tripling my money there because I got sucked into this big. I don't know, so I hope they do this more often, but they ramped up the hockey slate yesterday. Um, they. DraftKings put a 444 with a hundred thousand for first, and Ooh. and 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 they're they're usually their fifteen dollar you know lottery was like a twenty five or a twenty, paid like fifty thousand for first. I wonder if they're going to continue to do that. Um, yeah, the other awesome. thing, I mean, we'll we'll talk about it is, is we'll, we'll talk about more about what we're going to do with State Kings one of these days. But I'll tell you, it it it's a lot of responsibility, man, when you put stuff up on there. You know, like you gotta like. Yeah. It's uh, you really you really have to you have really have to play good when other when other when other people are counting on you. It's uh you can't like play like seventy four percent behaves. So actually, the other day you could have right. Oh my uh, god, you could you could have played in the last few games and you would have been very happy about yeah, it. Yeah, behaves was killing it recently. Um, but but yeah, it's uh that's, that's a new thing. I'm trying to work on that a little bit. But uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm, you know, listen. The good sports don't aren't around any for a while. Like there's there's no more LOL until January. There's no more tennis until January. No more auto race. We got to deal with this football and basketball crap for a while. So let's uh let's uh let, let's get after. We got a huge slate, which of course has become a one game slate, as these big slate usually usually do. Um, we got big buy ins. We got yep. all kinds of stuff, and I'm I'm back and ready to go. Um, great. Yeah, let's do it, man. I'm ready to, ready to get after it. I think the best thing to do is go game by game. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, pretty much the only way we can do it right now. Cause there's, there's going to be a lot of stuff today and there's a lot of questionables and a lot of things like that. So, so you want to start game by game with uh, golden state? No, we'll get there a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, sorry about this. I've got a, from one of our other guys, I got to respond to that message, but all right, let's jump into it. Uh, Clippers in Orlando. This is the only game at seven, which means it's very likely going to be a game that I try to avoid, especially as we've basically had late news on kind of every slate lately. And I want to, you know, do better. The one thing that I would say is that at right at, the, at first glance, Markel Fultz, I, you know, getting the minutes back and being as active as he is, I think that that's a play I could talk myself into. Um, and the Clippers are shorthanded. But I don't feel overly like in love with any of the. I mean, that's not. They're not fully shorthanded. I should say they're 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 actually they do have they do have George and and Kawhi back. But they're I, I should say everybody seems affordable. But you're not getting the minutes out of these guys that you're probably going to need. So I'm I'm mostly off this game with the exception of potentially Mar Markel Fultz uh, as he's gotten his minutes minutes back up. What what do you think about this one? What are you doing here? I can't imagine playing anybody from this game. Um... This is maybe I'm being biased, whatever. I just kind of want to just go live at six, leave at six thirty, put in some lineups that start at seven thirty or later, and have some dinner, and then come back at seven fifteen. And you know what I mean? Check yep. check for late stuff there. I mean, it's it's not to not to mention it's an early game. Not to mention it's the lowest total on the slate. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just it's just all the reasons for me to not want to play. Um, but, you know, again, if you if said had a, uh, you know, whatever, say, hey, I have to pick one DFS guy from each game, uh, ooh, that would be an interesting contest. You have to pick somebody from each game. If that would be the case, I would probably agree with you and say Mark Fultz would be would be my best play. But uh, I really doubt him. I would say though that on FanDuel, Paul uh, Kawhi Leonard is fifty eight hundred on FanDuel. He is, isn't he? That's that that's that's affordable enough to where I I think I'm going to probably take that shot. Ooh, um, Paul George is a little more. He's eighty three, but the, all these guys are are much more like they're very reasonable over on FanDuel. Um, and I think Fultz Fultz and Kawhi both you know Fultz is five K over there. 
I like Fultz for 30 plus fantasy points tonight. So I actually think I might do that. The only thing that worries me is, you know, what if Cole Anthony gets hot and then it becomes the Cole Anthony show. Like, it's just, it's a little weird. And then they've, they've got their other guys in there and then you've got Mo Wagner off of a big game. There's a lot of guys here who have done stuff, you know, who we can make a case for. I just personally feel like with the first game that I'm supposed to not really play it. But I mean, you see Paolo who's 7,500 and he put up 49 and on four of 16 shooting in his last time, his last time out there. I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like maybe I'll revisit this one later today. Cause I do have a little bit of interest. Um, the more I look at it, especially on the FanDuel pricing. All right. <laughs> next up, we got the Lakers in Toronto uh, Lakers playing much, much better, but I am very like Anthony Davis left with the flu last night after eight minutes. Um, we've seen that story before, but it's hard to criticize a guy who's been putting out like 50 and twenties. Um, if Davis plays, I, I think that I just am off of everybody here. I also think it's, you know, possible LeBron sits on a back-to-back -back coming, you know, he was in Cleveland last night, his return to Cleveland and all that. The Lakers were right there in the game. And then Donovan Mitchell just decided to go nuts down the stretch, but, yep. um, yeah, I, I'm not really, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not very high on this game for DFS. I'd like to find some people from Toronto. Uh, Van Vliet projects well every game and has just been terrible in real life. Um, Van Vliet, Siakam, what one Toronto guy makes sense to me. I just don't know which one it is. Do you have any, any thoughts on this one? I do. Um, and I don't know if we talked about this. I forget where we started recording or before we started recording is I, I'm looking at my projections and they're, they're early, but some of these are, are a little weird to me. Like I, I'm getting guys that are showing up as like incredible plays that I would imagine would just be just kind of okay plays. So we're going to see how it all kind of pans out. But I currently am, I'm showing Pascal Siakam as a standout on tonight's slate, which is, which is, which is a little odd uh, at 9,800. Um, it's a great uh, for him. It's okay. Him. But that, 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 that's where it is. And remember that you do have like, Kaminga and all this Golden State stuff that allow you to play wherever you want, not wherever you want. You know. Yeah, basically though. Um, yeah, and and so I have Siakam as a it's like a standout play uh, for whatever it's worth. I mean, you would think that Toronto that that Van Vliet at seventy one hundred would be like the, the logical guy, but for what I'm seeing right now is 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 Siakam kind of stands out. And on the Lakers side, um, I do have I do have Davis as a strong play, um, and I. I would imagine that LeBron sits. You know what I mean? Like, like this is the literally the perfect, perfect time for him to sit. You know, yeah, like, going to Canada. The problem is that they're back in content. You know, they 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 went on that winning streak for a little bit, and they're back like in, try, in like sort of not desperate mode, but they're really trying to win every game. Yeah, that's the only reason that I that I that I feel a little bit hesitant to know what will happen here. And Davis, because it was the flu, I feel like if he's good to go, we should we should probably be willing to at least assume that he's going to. Um, yeah, I, 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 I like I, I like Davis. Um, uh, I, I don't want to say regardless. Obviously, if, if LeBron's out, I like Davis more, right? But 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 I think Davis is reasonable with LeBron. And I, I like uh, a couple of other spend-ups better, I think. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to all that. Um, yep. But but uh, Davis is fine. But for right now, Siakam is probably the first guy I'm going to try to play on this slate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do like, see, I do, I do think Siakam is in play. I have this game all as question mark, question marks, what I'm going to do later, just because I'm curious about the the Davis thing would potentially open some things up. If Davis is out, I will be playing Thomas Bryant probably in, in a good portion of my lineups. I'm assuming that most others will consider that as well. Um, Bryant, by the way, played 31 minutes last night, had 20, what did he have? 28 minutes. He played had 31 fantasy points. Um, Atlanta, New York, uh, sheets. Why don't it's your Knicks? Yeah, you doing? don't want to, you don't want to fade this Trey Young. Um, it, 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 I mean, you you obviously this is your this is your favorite spot in the world. I mean, the, the guy comes to New York and they just freaking just give him the finger and they say f Trey Young literally for two and a half hours. Um, and and he loves it. He just loves it. Um, and uh, he's he's a really really good play. I mean, he projects slow. I mean, projects low. He doesn't project all that great, but. How, how can you not project with the Knicks give up 100 fantasy points to every player? Um, so, and it's a 232 point total, short, short spread or whatever it is. And, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's, I think it's a good play. But I'll tell you again, like, again, maybe my projections are kind of just like, like, like battling on me or whatever it is. But I am seeing like Mitchell Robinson as, as like almost the best play on the slate right now. Um, so, 
Ho- hopefully I'm wrong. Um, and I don't have to play a billion of them, but uh, that's what, that's what I'm seeing right now uh, as him being a really good player. And then I have these freaking backup guards for the Knicks showing up as decent, like quickly at 4,200. I can't imagine them playing, playing them on this big of a slate with this other value, but Quentin Grimes, who you've been trying to get me to play him and he's been doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um so I think one of those two, I wouldn't play them both, right? I think one of those two, but not the other, I think. Right. Um, but I think that those two guys are in play. Um, Brunson is fair, I guess. I mean, it, it seems like a game you kind of want to, you're going to want to do, you know? So yeah. I like Trey. Uh, you could try to talk me into Capella. We'll talk about that. And then, um, but on the Knicks side, I, I have Mitch Rob is a really, really strong <laughs> player. Right yeah. Um, yeah, I have no problem with the tray the tray play. I'm 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 on board with it um on both sites. And Jalen Johnson is gonna look like a really good value play. He's played, you know, 29 and 32 minutes. They like this guy. He had regular run even when they had Hunter and Collins playing. Um, so he should it should keep increasing. Bogdanovich um is gonna get his minutes increased at some point, and he's forty five hundred. Which takes away. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know he was back. Yeah, he's he's been back for a couple games. Um, played well the other night. So Bogdanovich is is the other one who I'm considering for value. But but priorities would be Trey Young for me. Um, I I do think Mitch Rob is a good play on the other side. I don't understand why the projections love him so much today. Yeah, I know. I'm I trying know. to figure that one out. Um, it's not like these other guys are questionable behind him, and yeah. his minutes have sort of had some been in flux at times anyway. So I'm a little bit confused. Yep. But I, I do think he's a reasonable play just on, you know, in a vacuum. I just don't want to play him at crazy high ownership when, I mean, we, we were getting him at like, at, at what was he, 1% on that one slate where Zach Collins was the same price as him. Um, and he ended up putting up like 40 whatever and winning the slate. Wow. Um, but yeah, as of right now, Trey Young, Jalen Johnson, Bogdanovich, and Robinson are the guys I'm interested in here. But Trey Young being the most interesting. Yeah, the, uh, Jalen... Uh... Jalen Johnson, I, I actually do have some good point per dollar play as well. Yep, absolutely. He's a, yeah, I think he's a really good play. Um, okay, right. so this, so this, this was the one that I was looking at this Charlotte Brooklyn game where I just kind of gazed and it just, it just, just looks like a, a, a light total for some reason. Um, maybe I'm just like kind of just not up to date on how these teams are playing anymore. But you would think that Charlotte Brooklyn, they, they. They would have nobody with an implied total of under one ten. You know what I mean? You you just have to imagine that this that this would be higher, but it's 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 only two twenty two. I mean, I don't know. Look, I think Durant looks like a reasonable enough play to me at ten seven. I don't know. Um, uh, I'll, I'll reiterate the same thing that I've been saying about uh, about uh, Kyrie Irving. It I just don't think that. I don't know. He's just not going to, it doesn't seem like he's going to make anybody any money. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they drop him in price a little bit. And then he, now he put, plays 40 minutes and 39 minutes and they move him up a little bit. It just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like he's got that ceiling. It's weird. I'm not saying it's weird. He's older, I guess, but, but, uh, Hey, it's against Charlotte. Anything's possible. Um, but maybe, maybe I'm hallucinating. Maybe Charlotte's really good defensively this year. I don't know about it. I, I, I no, can't imagine. No, that. I don't know why this total is. I don't quite, quite get it. it. Is, except for that Charlotte doesn't have a whole lot to, to rely on offensively. Um, yeah, I, I think that, I mean, look, Kyrie's fine. Um, I think on FanDuel a little bit better than he is on DraftKings. Rozier is fine for me. Um, I like the matchup for him and he certainly has a ceiling even at 8K. Um, but my favorite play on Charlotte is probably PJ Washington at 5,800. Um, I, I just think he's like consistently, he's like always getting you in the 30 to 45 range. And this is a really good matchup for him. So I, I kind of like CJ PJ Washington as my, as my favorite play on the Charlotte side. And, uh, and I, I will mix in a little Kyrie. I'm, I'm not really getting to Durant to be honest with you. And I'm not getting to Claxton, which may be a mistake. Uh, this is a good matchup for big. So maybe I'll put Claxton on my list. As, a, as another one to consider. But I like Washington and I like I like Kyrie on FanDuel a little bit. Um, I do think Kyrie will hit that hit that ceiling at some point. It just, it just he hasn't, you know, he can't quite put together a, a good full game. Um, whether it's shooting woes like his last game or whether the usage was all, you know, was it was more in Durant's favor the time before. He hasn't really been taking over as much as we've seen in the past. And 
Uh, I still think that I, I still think he's worth giving a shot to just because we know, we know the ceiling is there. One other guy I'm going to mention for very large field stuff only pretty much would be uh, Seth Curry at 40 at, at 3,600 and TJ Warren is back playing minutes. So that takes away a little bit of the upside of Kyrie and Kevin Durant, um, even though obviously they both can always get there, but just another guy who can actually create offensively off the bench for 18 minutes a game. Um, that's the only reason I mentioned it, but but yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's a game that seemed like it should have a higher total and may, maybe we can revisit it later. Cause I do think that you can make an argument for stacking this one. Brooklyn's been playing better. So the blowout's always in play here for Charlotte. All right. Next you got Washington, Chicago. Yeah. Boy, when is Chicago going to trade all their guys? Uh, they've got a lot of players people want and they are going nowhere fast. Well, go ahead. Sheets. Well, I have, uh, a couple of point per dollar plays from Chicago that yep. helps you. You have the, the uh, awesome look lookalike Alex Caruso at the 3,500. Uh, never a great play for me, but that's what I'm showing. And then I have the, uh, the Bobby, Bobby five Firestone, uh, Patrick Williams at 3,800. Um, yeah. Showing yeah. up is decent. So I don't know. You want to play those guys. You can play those guys. Um, Washington without Beal. Um, yeah, I guess I'm, I guess I'm Monty Morris. Um, can't imagine playing Daniel Gafford. Um, Kristoff at 92. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. Uh, so for me, probably not much. I mean, if I get to, oh man, am I really going to play Caruso or Patrick Williams on this slate? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I've got the, I've got them on the list. Um, I don't feel great about either one of them, to be honest with you. But um, Caruso, I guess I'd have a little bit ahead, but I don't know, man. Patrick Williams, I like Patrick. I, I I'm I thought he'd be a better real life player. I mean, he's you know yeah he's fighting off coming back after the injury and hasn't been nearly as good as people thought. Did play 32 minutes in the last game. The minutes seem to be coming back. He's sort of more he's really just a three and d guy mostly anyway um i was i'm a little disappointed in the, the career path he's gone he's gone down so far um but i i, I mean i think that this is a, a typical one of the bulls situation and trying to figure out which one is always difficult um i, I like vucevic is i like the massive for vucevic and i like the uh the levine you know we, he's coming off of a, a real ceiling he had a monster game the other night um and then Porzingis has been great lately, but I, I think that mainly I like the the one bull idea and uh, I'll just leave it with that for right now because I'm sure we'll hear news later that will make it more or less interesting. But I think that all of the bulls are, it's just a good matchup that you want to get exposure to, I think. And I don't really love the, even without uh, <clears throat> Bradley Beal, I don't really love the uh, the stuff as much as I thought I might on, on Washington. Uh, I thought I would, could see more of a game stack here. Maybe maybe Kuzma and Porzingis are a little bit more in play than I'm giving them credit for. So uh, this could this could be a stack or fade game. It really is. Like it, I, I don't I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. Right now, one bull seems to be my 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 overwhelming thing. I think if I had to pick one, it would probably be Vucevic in this matchup. All right, uh, what do you got next? OKC Memphis. Yeah. All right. So on the uh, OKC side, as always. Uh, you can consider one of Giddy or Shea. I worry about this I, I, being a, like a real blowout. Um, I know that they're pesky OKC at times, but I always worry about, Mem you know, trying to beat Memphis at home. Uh, they're just really, really tough and they're really deep. Um, so it's a game that I don't have a ton of interest in from a DFS perspective as of right now, unless we have some people out, except for maybe I can talk myself into Giddy by the end of the day. Um and and I guess Jeremiah Robinson Earl, because the minutes have been there, is, is finally projecting where he should have been projecting probably before. But we all know that it's it's pretty all over the place what happens with those guys, although his minutes have definitely been more established. Uh, so for me, it's uh, it's mostly uh, just a, a potential giddy play. But you could consider jaw in the in the mix of all the, 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 the spend ups. But I'm not I'm not overwhelmingly excited about this one either. Yeah, I don't know. It's 232 with 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 two. You know, studs in training or studs apparent or studs right now. I mean, uh, I'll play. I'll I'll play, I, I'll take a shot. Um, I don't know if I'll play that in my big one, but um, 
play a jaw and a shea and, and then just make the rest work, you could do it. Um, the, the guy I'm getting to that's, that's a little bit awkward, I can't imagine why. Oh, actually, he's not on the same team. Sorry, another, another team. Um, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, Steven Adams, I guess that's okay, 5,500, but mm-hmm. center, I mean, there's a lot of guys. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you'll get both Ja and Shea at 5% ownership. That helps. Um, and uh, you got to get a big total game. And I promise you this, if the game does stay close, Shea's going to have 60 fantasy points. I mean, so, well, um, I don't know about that. I, I mean, I, mean? I feel like – like if anything that I've I'm learning from sort of seeing these guys lately, like I don't know that she, like Shea has not come close to hitting at all. Like okay. he's been one of the worst, like worse than Steph was last year in terms of the way people play him. And I just think that Giddy like actually can get there at 7,300 because he doesn't need to get 75 fantasy points. Okay. Um, but Giddy, I mean, Giddy's put up, he put up uh, 55 the game before last 44, the game before that. I just am having trouble with this one with, 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 with Shay, just cause it's, it's never working. Okay. Um, right. But, but maybe, I mean, look, there's, there's, that doesn't mean that it's always going to stay that way. The usage is still good. All the underlying numbers look like he should be doing even better, but it's, it's just, it's just hard to pay off that 10, three price tag. Um, yep. And then the same with Morant. Um, I do like Morant a little bit better than I like uh, Shay tonight. Sure. If there's, if I had to pick two, but. But I, I do think they can stay cl- – like, there's a chance they stay close with Giddy um, and and then these these others, the the Poku gets hot or Jalen Williams or something. I'm just not going to take a risk and play those guys today because I don't I don't see the reason to. If I had to pick one, it would probably be Jalen Williams uh, to play with these guys. Um, all right. What do you got next, Sheets? It uh, looks like the – I have Detroit and New Orleans. New Orleans. And I think we missed a game, but no, I guess we didn't. Uh, this, and this this one seems kind of like a snoozer. I mean, Zion, again, if I had to play one guy from this game, it would be Zion, but I'm probably not going to play anybody. You like it? You like anything here? Yeah, it's hard to get to. I'm sort of with you. Um, and, and they've. Been, I like what, like, from a real basketball perspective, I really think that the Pelicans have a chance to win the title this year. Um, and I think you're going to see a much – they're going to be able to make some moves too because they've got so much good young talent. They're one of the deepest teams in the league. Really hard to play them for DFS for me. The one, the one guy who sort of stands out because the price has come down, um, due to some some less than in, you know exciting games because Zion has just completely taken over. Um, McCollum, I guess, is is just a little cheaper than we're used to seeing him. And I would bet anything that Detroit is resting at least one or two players tonight on the back to back, probably more. So I will reserve my my Detroit takes for six because I, I just don't know who's going to end up playing tonight on the back-to-back. They've been playing much better basketball lately, um, but I feel like there's just it's just unlikely that they play all these guys on the back-to-back, especially with how, how many bodies they have. Um, so that'll that'll dictate what I do with Detroit. But, yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't really see it see the, the argument on the New Orleans side. The one thing I'd say is that, like, that weird Valanchunas play is going to hit sometimes, but I don't think this is the right kind of slate to to go after it. You do have Larry Nance at 3,900. The minutes are going to be all over the place sometimes, but he's he could play more than the the, the 20 minutes he's projecting for, for sure. Um, but as of right now, they're just, just a little too many bodies for me to have interest in New Orleans, unfortunately, because uh, I, like, I like having an excuse to watch New Orleans play because they're one of my favorite teams to watch, but this is probably not going to be a night where I do it. I also think that for what it's worth, I think this is a very, very safe – I don't know why they're only favored by 10 and a half. I feel like they could be favored by 15 in this game and that wouldn't be enough. <laughs> I think they're going to get, I think they're going to smoke Detroit. All right. Uh, next we have, uh, we've moved on into the uh, eight. Oh no, we're still in the eight o'clock games. Um, Bucks and Sacramento uh, sheets. Why don't you go here? Yeah, I'll tell you this. Um, somebody who I've missed, missed out on and he's been on, you know, the winning lineup, like in back-to-back games, or, or I, and be still, he hasn't projected well, so I've just been kind of off him. His, his Drew Holiday has been putting up freaking numbers um, last, like, two or three games. Um, and it's enough for me to take notice, that's for sure, in a in a game that's really fast-paced, um, and he's still projecting terribly. Um, I don't say terribly, but he's still not projecting all that great. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just missing it, and I should just join the train, I suppose. I still doesn't project for any ownership. And again, it's Sacramento. You're supposed to you're supposed to play somebody. Um, Giannis, uh, 12-4. Again, you could probably do it uh, if you want to. 
It's just a lot of money to spend on, well, you know what? He's went up in the sixties. I mean, he's been doing better. Um, not these poor, you know what I mean? But he's, um, you know, at 12, four, I mean, you, you need, you need, you need a six handle just to get started. You know what I mean? Like you, you have, you have a 60 is like a floor at 12, four. Um, so, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'll get to him. And I'm really not seeing much on the Sacramento side of this. And again, it seems like a game that you want to play, but I'm just not seeing anybody right now. Yeah, I think this is a reasonable game stack candidate. We've seen Fox really fall off lately. Um, I like this matchup, though, uh, for both he and Sabonis, to be honest with you. So um, I'll take a shot. It's pretty crazy if you see Sabonis' stat line from the last game. He He took four shots, and he had 49 fantasy points. Um, he had a triple double, but it's pretty wild to see Sabonis only taking four shots. It's a tough matchup one on one with Lopez, but because he can bring him away from the basket, actually, he doesn't really do that as much anymore. So maybe I should be a little bit more off of this, but it feels like you're supposed to do something with this. I, I like the holiday or Giannis and I'm having a, real, a hard time outside of I, I, just taking the flyer on Fox and sort of the similar, similar play to Kyrie. It just feels like at 8,600, he could certainly get there in this kind of a matchup. We know that they're going to play drop coverage and he's going to have some open, open three looks. You could say the same thing for Herter. And it, is, is it weird that maybe my favorite play in this game is the guy who will be un, the unowned Keegan Murray? Um, look, he, he's this is not a safe play. This is not a play that you, that you want to make every day. But the guy just put up 38 fantasy points the other day. He's 4K. The minutes are consistent. His his range of outcomes are going to be wild. He's, he's a 19-year-old rookie. But I, I do think Keegan Murray is definitely in play as a, as a large field uh, GPP kind of a thing. But potentially even a smaller field. I I think at 4k, it's just a, why is Patrick Williams a better play than Keegan Murray is? I don't, I don't understand that. Um, all right. So then we get to the, 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 the the team, everybody, everybody's favorite right now. Um, Indiana, right. Um, so Indiana, I'm just scrolling around here, trying to get to the right screen. I've got to say, I got I have to say this, like TJ McConnell must be really, really hurt because he was in a position to play like 40 minutes the other day. He was ready to play. Um, and he couldn't, he couldn't get there. I mean, he couldn't make the court. So um, I've just kind of back to back due to an illness. I, I don't know what that is. That's going to stop him. Stop, stop a guy at a stage of his career from getting 40 minutes, which is, which he would have gotten. I don't um, know if he would have gotten it, by the way. I, I don't buy into that. I actually thought uh-huh. that he was, a, I thought he was going to be an interesting fade on that tournament. Oh, interesting. Okay. No, they love Nemhard. Like Nemhard is not a. This is not a nobody player, by the way. Okay, okay. this guy was playing played at Gonzaga. He's a real guy. He's a real player. Um, and they also have Aaron Neesmith, who they like a little bit as well. So, I I, I don't know. I don't know where you know what's going to happen with McConnell the next time that happens because I, it I, they looked pretty good with Nemhard running the show. I have to say, um, I think everybody comes back tonight for what it's worth. I think that Miles Turner is mildly interesting. And I think that as always, Halliburton is always interesting. Um, and then you get to the other side, Anthony Edwards, 8,800. I think that's reasonable actually with no cat. And I don't mind uh, taking shots on Jalen Noel or D'Angelo Russell. I think this is an interesting game that you could consider potentially getting a little stack in with Halliburton on one side, Edwards on the other side. And uh, as she, as you say, sometimes, you know, rock the house. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I like this one a little bit and, uh, while no one's projecting well, that's that's totally fine by me. Kyle Anderson also firmly in play at 4,700, in my opinion. So I think there's a lot you could do with this game. This is probably one of the more interesting games, I think, to to get a stack to where you want to spend your money, like the Halliburton, Edwards. They started Wendell Moore. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I um, have to look more into that. But I do like uh, Kyle Anderson even off the bench and Jalen Noel. Um, it worries me for the starters a little bit because that's a pretty powerful, uh, especially with Noel. The guy is just... I mean, he's a usage monster. He's been really, really good. And it's it just – I'm just wondering how when they start fading uh, D'Lo out of it. But as long as they don't, D'Lo is still playing enough minutes and he's 7K, putting up 40s every night. So uh, I, I think one of Red, Russell or Edwards, uh, w- could potentially one of Noel or Anderson to go with him, and then uh, Halliburton on the other side uh, that, with, with potentially Turner. So I, I like this game a little bit. Yeah, so 237 total reasonable spread i mean it's something you want to look at and uh well most important is who's who's playing right i mean who's playing for indiana indiana i mean if Halliburton sits again then 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 it's back to mb habes at, at, at all you know um if maybe even if, if Halliburton plays mb habes yeah. play you know <laughs> he's, he's he's up to 5500 or whatever so 
something you probably don't want to do, but I'll tell you who's, who's annoying. A couple of guys are annoying. First of all, so Jalen Smith, I mean, he had, he had like 35 fantasy points to make it to half. I, I, I don't know exactly. I don't think is just FYI. I don't, by the way, I don't think he's going to play today. I just, okay. just got a notification just this minute. Um, oh, that, that, that he's, he's, that he's or downgraded, downgraded to questionable, which okay. usually means out. Yeah. Well, and if, well, hope, hopefully for them, Turner's playing at least. Yeah. Um, uh, and then uh, for those people that got lazy and, and had TJ McConnell and they said, Oh, he's out. I'm going to swap him for Neesmith who's starting. They got punished. He's, he, he started and played 15 minutes, Aaron Neesmith. That's uh, yeah. That that'll happen was, sometimes. Was much better. 15 minutes, four personal fouls. Not a, not a great day for, for Mr. Neesmith. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on the uh, on the uh, the MB Habes. Uh, if he if listen, what's his name says, I want I wonder if we should still play him. I mean, if he's, is he good enough to still get minutes? If 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 if, if uh, yeah, he was still playing 28 minutes, right? With with, with Halliburton in. Yeah, I mean, I th- I actually think that the 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 guy who let everybody down and the things with with Matherin, which is going to happen, you know, he just had two horrible right. shooting nights. I, I think Matherin is a better play than than okay. Nemhart and this on this okay. slate. Um, I think the Buddy Healed once I, once you get once Nemhart gets to this price with Halliburton That's back true. and not having the That's ball true. in his hands, I think we're going to want some interest in the other guys. Also, Nemhart is like a he's he's a guy who you would like watching play basketball. He doesn't really have an interest in trying to create his own shot. You even see, I mean, these okay. games like he had the high usage in the last game because he was on fire. Right. But the game was before that. I mean, seventeen usage of 17%, 14%. He's a good, just a really good team basketball player. And, uh, and I know they like him, but I, I don't, I don't know that I want to start getting invested in the uh, playing him at 5,600 with Halliburton, but I could be wrong. This, and this would be the night where it's worth speculating because I don't think anybody in the world's going to play him. And it's weird because this guy is just basically, you know, has the, been the talk of the DFS world and uh, he's going to project really poorly, but I, I, I probably am not ready to do it just quite yet. Before we go on, uh, this is the guy that uh, from Minnesota side that I, I just felt so curious that he was like the best projected play for me from Minnesota, and that would be be Kyle Anderson at this price. Um, mm-hmm. Just seems as though like you've been a, a huge total. I mean, you, you you want kind of like you know, the better player, sort of like you, you would like uh, what's his name to stand out more, like Edwards or or D'Lo or somebody like that. Um, but hey, it's, it's, it's almost projecting at six X and. He's a uh, slow mo for a reason. He doesn't look like he's doing much, but he gets it done, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I like him, and it just seems like you said. I mean, you kind of hope the injuries break your way, and you, you kind of want to play this because you know the Golden State side is going to take up a you know a lot of action, and you'd love to try to get different in some way. But mm-hmm. uh, speaking yeah. of which, you, you have an hour break between the eight o'clock. A start. Can I just throw out one more game though? One more guy. Just yeah, sure. keep an eye. Just think, consider Jaden McDaniels. Um, I think that, that that last game was fluky in terms of the minutes, and he was coming back from the illness that he had for like like t- ten days, which makes me feel a little better about my own illness. I have to say because it feels like it's been hanging around with me for a little while. But uh, but Jalen McDaniels is another one who belongs in that Kyle Anderson, J- Jordan, Jalen Noel uh, conversation. Sorry, sheets. Now we can move on. Yeah, you took my whole transition and everything. Sorry about that. So, com- all right. So here, are the all the guys from Golden State are out except for Clay Thompson. So, the guys that I have listed, I guess in order, are Kaminga, Poole, Clay, and then then they got Lamb, and and Divincenzo would be the next guys. Um, and. Uh, and, and and yeah, I mean Kaminga at thirty four hundred is kind of a seems kind of a rough fade. As as does well, I mean all these guys, Poole and Thompson. But again, this game could get gross, you know. And if this game does get gross, there's literally no reason to play Clay Thompson, you know, a zillion minutes, I imagine. Um, but uh, they don't have that many, you know. They, there's only so many ways to go, and they are sitting all these people. So um, Poole. Thompson, Lamb, you got to talk about Lamb, Kaminga, DiVincenzo. And then, like I said, you know, if, if you want to run it back with, with uh, you know, a semi poorly projected Utah guy, I mean, you could just pick your pick your favorite if you want to know the truth. I mean, none of, none of them look all that great. So, um, uh, marketing 8,200, I don't know. Uh, 
Clarkson, 74, Clark, Sexton. None of these guys are great, but if you want, if you want, if you want to run back, I mean, just pick any of those. Yep. Um, I, I do like, uh, I, I think the automatics for me are pool and, and, and Kaminga. Um, I think that everyone else is, is, is obviously in play, but it's, it's, I don't, I don't feel quite as secure with them, including Anthony lamb, who should play plenty of minutes tonight. Uh, Clay Thompson obviously can get going, but I don't see like Clay is not the, the beat you off the dribble guy. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. anymore. So I, I think pool is, is really the one you want here. And I, and I don't mind clay as well. I don't mind if you want to play those two guys with Kaminga and get a little stack going. Um, hope this game stays close and really, really weird to say that about golden state and Utah. <laughs> like I would have said, I would have thought we were saying this if it, if the game stays close. Um Conley is questionable, which is sort of going to dictate whatever you want to do on the other side, in my opinion. If he's in, probably nothing. If he's out, I think that you can play Sexton and Clarkson again and feel pretty okay about it. And I would even include uh, Olenek into that uh, as well. But the priorities are coming and pool, in my opinion. All right, so Boston Phoenix could be a preview That's, of something. Yeah, the, I mean, Boston has literally been like, I mean, their advanced numbers, it's pretty ridiculous that we don't just consider them clearly the favorite to win everything by a lot. Like, they are just putting up legendary, the best offense in the history of basketball um, by far. Like, it's really not even that close. It's kind of amazing, actually. Um, they're really good, man. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What do, what do you. What do you like here, though? No, I mean, I. it's hard to dispute. Um, I like... Um, nothing <laughs> i mean not much uh it's gonna be a good game it's funny it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good game but 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 most people are gonna much dfs are gonna be focused on <laughs> on the kaminga yep. pool uh whatever show over, over in golden state trying to fight back from a 120 to 92 last four minutes to get their last couple of fantasy points in or something like yep. that then watching Booker and Tatum and go after each other in what could be the NBA Finals, who knows? Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you get to tell me you want to play Tatum and Booker and just kind of, you know, just see what happens. All right. I mean, I've made worse plays, um, but they certainly don't project all that great. Um, so yep. I'm, I'm, pro I'm probably I'm probably off. Yeah, I can't find anything that I, that I that I want here, and it's kind of you know it's the last game of the night. It's a big game. It's a good game, and you know I, I, I'll just always say that like I don't care who Jason Tatum is going against anymore. We have nope. to like he is a very deserving ten eight. You know what I mean? Like he is yeah. he's always at fifty, and then occasionally you're going to get that seventy five because he'll score like forty five fifty real life points. Um, the, you know any of these guys, I'm not. I'm certainly not going to fault you for Tatum, Brown, or Smart, but. I, I'm just, I just can't quite get there on this slate. One guy who's been really, really good when he's played lately, for the most part, he had the one really down game, but brogdon has been awesome. Like he's, I mean, if, if this guy played a full game ever, he would who's just, like, Brogdon. Brogdon is like, he's just, he's just a terrific basketball. I mean, like probably the best sneaky pickup of the year was getting Brogdon into this mix. Cause he's really, really good. And he gets to play with, you know, with one of Tatum or Brown off the court a lot. He gets to close most of the time. Not all the time, um, but he's 5K and he's been all he's been doing is putting up 30 pluses. Um, I don't know. That's, I guess, probably my favorite play in this game. And and all that to say that I probably won't play anybody, though. Um, he and Chris Paul are my favorite two plays. And Chris Paul's coming back from an injury. Who knows what they're going to do with him? But 7,200 in a competitive matchup. But I, I just think that it's probably a stay away. Uh, and, you know, with that, I, I have my my priorities. And, and look, these are these are definitely open, you know, to some discussion because there's going to be some things that happen. And also we'll see what happens with Indy's big man situation, because if you do lose Jalen Smith and if for any reason Turner sits, they have two other big men who are really cheap, who get who are very active. And uh, we've seen good big games from Batatze and we've seen big games from from uh, Jackson before. So just keep an eye on that for a minute for Indy. Um, one of the Bulls, PJ Washington, Trey Young, Lakers in Toronto with a question mark. Just curious who's going to play for the Lakers. Minnesota Indy is as my game stack. Halliburton, one of Russell or Edwards, one of Anderson or Noel, or maybe even McDaniel's, and uh, and potentially consider even like a Buddy Heald play or Miles Turner. I think that's an interesting game stack to go with the obvious Golden State value, which is Kaminga and Poole as my one and two. But I certainly think we could consider some other guys there as well. So that's I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna predict that by by six o'clock, 
that all all of my takes here are are fraudulent. Um, I shouldn't say fraudulent. I'm telling you, something just seems weird with this whole projection run that I have here. I'm just kind of reporting what I'm seeing here. Yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm, I'm I'm guessing that guys that I think are great right now are going to be just average, and guys that I just don't even have on the list are going to show up as being much better. So. Not not to say this was not worth it, but I, I definitely would tease this by saying just please make sure to show up at six yep. Um, yep. For, for updated stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, with that, uh, we're going to do a football show as yes. well, guys. Um, and uh, good luck to everybody out there today. We'll be live with you at six and yep. uh, let's make some money. We got sheets back. So all the all the good vibes are back. Let's get it, guys. Hey.